Blessed be everybody and welcome to another episode of Witch Please. It is I, Oda the Seer, and this one is dedicated for our newbie witches. I just wanted to say hello <laughs> and welcome you to the craft. Now, I've been in the craft for long enough where I've had a lot of people ask me, Odin, where do I start? And, you know, there's a lot of information out there, and unfortunately, a lot of pretty talented witches, or at least have the capability of being talented, get so much misinformation that they get a little confused and they don't know where to go, but they end up buying a whole bunch of herbs and all these other things that they don't really need to start off the craft. And then they start with books that are just un real to start off with. I mean, I remember once I had one person say to me that they started with the Witch's Bible, and I was like, well, that's a pretty tough read for somebody who is just starting out. So I thought I would make this video for you guys, for all the new ones, and some of the people who have actually been in the craft for a long time, or for a couple of years, and they're still trying to figure their way out, and they haven't really gotten all this information. So I'm going to give you a list of the ones, the books that I love. So I just wanted to let you know that the craft is really individual. And if anybody's going to tell you, oh, you have to go this way and you have to do that, that's not true, everybody. That's not true. I still, to this day, have people making comments on, you know, oh, you really don't know how to do this. And I'm like, well, the first key fundamental um, belief structure in the craft is that the craft has many different facets to it. So when I have people getting all up in my grill because of the fact that I do my ritual in this manner, or I teach this, and they get all angry about it, I'm just like, well, you know what? You, more than anyone else, if you're calling yourself a witch, or a spiritualist for that matter, you need to know better than to be getting all up in someone's face and, and knocking down something that doesn't necessarily go with what you have been taught. So, let's get started. The first book are the books that I believe for any starter you need to have. If you're a newbie witch, this is, these are the books that you should have, you should learn, they give you the key fundamental um, areas that you need to be able to start really building a strong foundation to your craft. And the first one would have to be Wicca, A Guide to the Solitary Practitioner by Scott Cunningham. This book is amazing. I have owned this book about 17 times, I'm not even kidding, I've owned and I keep on giving it out. Every time I buy a new copy, I give it out, and I give it out, and I give it out. What I like about Scott Cunningham's book, Wicca, A Guide to the Solitary Practitioner, is that it gives you the basics. You learn about altars. You learn about elements. You learn about um, casting circles. You learn about standing stones. You just It's just a wonderful book to just kind of get yourself in there and understand why we have Athenes and why we have Bolins and why we have cauldrons and why we use candles and it's just it's just a wonderful fundamental book and you know for anybody who is really new to the craft it's just a wealth of knowledge and by the time you finish reading this book you'll be like wow I really do have a great grasp on the basics of the craft and if you have a good foundation darling you can build a strong tower and that's where it comes in so Scott Cunningham's Wicca, A Guide to the Solitary Practitioner, must have for the beginner witch. Now the other one was Wicca, A Further Guide to the Solitary Practitioner, and that is also by Scott, Cun Scott Cunningham. It is not a must have, but I did put it in here because of the fact that it is the continuation to Wicca, A Guide for the Solitary Practitioner. The other book that I love now, don't get me, I, I loved Wicca, A Guide to the Solitary Practitioner, but my book, oh, amazing, is Making Magic by Eden McCoy. This book, this book has, you go into the Tawat symbols, she goes into um, invocation, she goes into calling the gods and goddesses. She's just so powerful in what she teaches, how to create magic. She's just a wonderful wonderful teacher. She's so innovative in her approach to magic and she's so innovative in the way, I mean, and this woman wasn't even, she was a self-initiated witch. So she comes from that point where she's like, hey, you know, I had to start from square one and she became an amazing author. People were to say which one 
first, which you get. I would get Ada McCoy's book, to be honest with you. The way she shows you how, you know, the Star of David can be sectioned off into each one of the elements, just amazing, 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 amazing. She just, she, she allows you to be able to pull it all together and see that it's actually very cohesive. Wonderful. So, Ida McCoy's book, Making Magic, another one I highly recommend. Ida McCoy's a little bit harder of a read, um, but all the information's there. All the information. The third book, or sorry, the fourth book, or the fourth book, that I would highly recommend is The Complete Idiot's Guide to Wicca and Witchcraft. I had to put that one in there, y'all. I just had to. It's, it's just a, it's a really good book for you to be able to start understanding. And what I like about, you know, The Complete Idiot's Guide to Wicca and Witchcraft is that they, they, they dull it down. Like, they really, really do. And, you know, I've had a lot of people who said, oh, you know, it's just a little too simple, they found. But, again, not everybody is going to be on the same level of understanding. Not everybody is going to be that intuitively um, connected where they can try and get the deeper meaning behind a certain situation. And when you have something like the Complete Idiot's Guide to Witch Wicca and Witchcraft, they don't take anything for granted in this book. It's very informative. It case covers all the basics and then some. And it's an easy read. This is the thing that I love about it. It's an easy read. I actually had one student say to me before, I was like, oh, here you go. Um, here's a copy of uh, Wicca, a Guide to the Solitary Practitioner. And he said to me, and this is when I learned a wonderful lesson. He said, that book looks intimidating to me. So when I said to him, so what about this book? The, you know, the Complete Idiot's Guide to Wicca and Witchcraft, he was all like, he leaped through it and he was like, you know what, this doesn't look so intimidating. So again, for those of you who have issues with trying to comprehend a lot of things or whatnot, the Complete Idiot Guide to Wicca and Witchcraft is a good one, a good place to start because of the fact that it is very simple and very easy to read. Okay, so those are the four fundamental books for um, beginning witchcraft that I feel personally. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who have other books that I may never have seen or that I don't necessarily agree are the fundamental, you know, beginner guide to witch Wicca and witchcraft. But for me, those are the four that I highly recommend. We are a belief structure, the craft, which is incorporate voodooist, hoodooist, um, pagans, alchemists, all of these, there's so many different people that can fall under the spectrum of witches. So take the information that I give you to expand your knowledge and your power. Don't be like, I don't want to learn this because this doesn't go with my faith. No. Open up, y'all. Open up. And the more knowledge is power. The more knowledge you accumulate, the more powerful you'll be. I do everything from Asian magic to um, Wicca. I do everything from witchcraft, hoodoo, voodoo, santeria, all different forms of magical teaching, shamanism, all of them. I incorporate all of them into my magic, and I believe that I have a vast amount of knowledge and a vast amount of spells that have worked to be able to back up 